What's going on guys? Welcome back to the NVM channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss five of the best wagons you can purchase instead of the G81 M3. NV Motorsport is in the game. Okay. So the ultimate wagon has been released, the BMW G81 M3. Comes in an X-Drive format with 503 brake horsepower, 650 newton meters of torque, and 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. It's an absolute beast of a car, but it starts from around 80,000 pound, and with good spec, it can range all the way up to about 105,000 pound. So in today's video, we are gonna discuss what you can purchase at a reasonable budget of 5,000 pound. So when we're talking wagons, we're talking estate vehicles, cars that can hold five people and have a large boot for great equipment usage. So you can chuck in your camera equipment, you can chuck in your tools, you can chuck in parts and get them from A to B in style and in performance. So in no particular order, we are gonna talk about the first car on my list, and that has to be the BMW E91 330D. Specifically, the LCI comes out of the factory with 240 brake horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque. Now with some stage one tuning, we can take that up to about 300 horsepower and 600 newton meters, and with further hardware, like a turbo back exhaust and intercooler, and stage two tuning, we can take it up to 340 brake and 680 newton meters of torque. And it doesn't stop there. You can actually fit a hybrid turbocharger with a gearbox map and further tuning with meth injection, you can gain up to 500 brake horsepower and 800 newton meters of torque. So the 0 to 60, once completed, should get you in the sub four seconds, but that's purely dependent on the tires, traction, etc. So when looking for a car, we are gonna use Ultra Shader. You can use any platform, piston heads, eBay, etc. But if you're a bit like me, you type in the make, the model, press search, and click on price lowest. And I don't know what it is, it's something that I always do when I'm looking for a car. Comment below if you guys do the same. So looking at E91 330Ds, like I said, LCI has a better engine in my opinion and better, stronger gearbox. But generally you are looking between three and a half and four and a half to 5,000 pound for a decent one. I do prefer the SE models because I think they just look so much more sleeper and you do get a better interior on some occasions too. The 330D does have some common issues with gasket seals, rocker covers, um, turbochargers were known to kind of be strong as they were, but obviously some cars have been abused and service and the maintenance ain't up to scratch. Uh, preventative maintenance on these are literally gasket seals and uh, making sure you service them right. Gearbox service is imperative on these. Um, but yeah, great car, great option. Let me know below as to what you think. So car number two has to be the Skoda Octavia VRS Estate. I say Skoda, but most of you guys call it Skoda. This two litre TFSI engine is the same engine that's fitted in the Mark 5 GTI, comes out of the factory with 200 brake horsepower and 280 newton meters of torque. Now those watching our channel will know that a stage one tune on a KO3 powered two litre TFSI is gonna take it up to about 250 brake horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. And a stage two with a turbo back exhaust, intercooler, intake will take it up to about 280 brake horsepower and 480 newton meters of torque. You can furthermore upgrade the high pressure fuel pump and get more torque out of the vehicle but the KO3 soon runs out of puff and that's where the beauty of the TFSI comes in. You can purchase a KO4 turbocharger kit from an Audi S3, Golf Edition 30 etc. You can bolt it on with the injectors, fuel pressure sensor, map sensor and turbocharger and gain up to about 360 brake horsepower and 520 newton meters of torque. In that form, it really does hurdle the car from 0 to 60 in about four and a half to five seconds. Not quite as quick as a G81 M3, but with further tuning, a hybrid turbo, we can definitely see low quarter miles in the 11s and 0 to 60s under four seconds. Now the Skoda Octavia VRS ranges from about two and a half thousand pound to four and a half thousand pound, depending on mileage and spec. There are a few common concerns you have to be worried about with the TFSIs, mainly the PCV valve, early revisions leaked and caused idle problems and mass airflow errors. The cam follower wearing out and causing damage to your inlet cam and also core packs and spark plugs. With these careful maintenance procedures and a good service, the cars usually output 
factory figures and are a great base to build upon. Now, early models on the TFSR platforms did have problems with the oil pickup pipe, which you do need to address. A simple clean and a replacement can usually fix the problems. Other little things like engine mounts and rocker cover gaskets can also fail too. Now, preventative maintenance on the TFSI has to be the timing belt and water pump, and also they run a timing chain system that links the rear exhaust cam to the front inlet cam to drive the high pressure fuel pump. But yes, a real worthy contender. Now, wagon number three has to be the Audi A4 3 liter TDI Quattro. Now this thing comes out of the factory with 236 brake horsepower, 500 newton meters of torque, and it does a 0 to 60 in six seconds, thanks to the Quattro all-wheel drive system. So stage one tuning on this three liter TDI can take power up to 300 brake horsepower and 620 newton meters of torque. No hardware modifications required, but we do advise upgrading that intercooler. The intercooler is the same as what runs on the 180 TSI and the two liter TSI, so it's not really the most efficient. And with stage two tuning, it's imperative to get as cool intake temperatures as possible. Stage two tuning does require a downpipe and a turbo back exhaust. You can run the downpipe like the US models around the passenger side on UK cars, and it will give a quicker transition to exit. And with stage two tuning, we can get up to 350 brake horsepower and 680 newton meters of torque. That's enough to take a 0 to 60 in about 4.5 seconds. Furthermore to that, with a hybrid turbo, you can see up to 450 brake horsepower which should take your 0 to 60 and your quarter miles that similar to the G81 M3. So the Audi A4 Avant and our local ultra trader they haven't quite hit sub 5k but we are gonna forgive that because you can get some models it's just this moment of time there isn't one available. I think these cars are absolutely amazing that they're a great design you know price range is starting at five grand and obviously they are getting on a bit, so mileage is going to be over 100k. But these are solid cars, solid engines, and great performance to be had. So yeah, make sure you check out this event if you want to tune and get some power out of it. So car number four on our list of wagons has to be the VW Passat R36. <laughs> Now this R36 shares its underpinnings with that of the R32, although it's a 3.6 litre V6 engine with about 300 brake horsepower. Now tuning potential on stage one and stage two isn't that great being naturally aspirated, but in stock form it does a 0 to 60 in 5.6 seconds, which is an absolute beast for the size of the car. Now there's guys around the world who have actually turbocharged and supercharged these cars and taken them up to about 700 brake horsepower. And it's definitely gonna be an overall cheaper build than purchasing a G81 M3. You can get the 0 to 60 in about three seconds flat and a quarter mile in 10 seconds with a turbocharger kit on the R36, an absolute beast. Definitely my favorite sleeper wagon. Now, the VW R36, when I came up with this as a, as a potential wagon car, firstly, there's none available today on Autotrader, and the price range is above our budget of five grand, but I have seen them go for less than that on other auction sites. So it's definitely one to be had. Just look at them. They look absolutely amazing. Not your typical Passat. And it handles well too. So common issues on these are going to be spark plugs and coil packs, etc. There aren't many other issues. I mean, bushes, suspension components, obviously, as wear and tear with the age. But I mean, preventative maintenance is just going to be a good service and making sure suspension and brakes are in good nick too. So yeah, absolute beast of a car when you stick a bit of money in them. And last but not least, for wagons, this is a bit of a wild card. The Mini Countryman Cooper S. Now, I know you guys out there are laughing right now. It's a Cooper S, it's a Mini, but it's classified as a wagon because it's a wider vehicle, it's a taller vehicle, and it's a longer vehicle. So in the eyes of the wagon world, it's a wagon. The beauty of it is it runs a four-wheel drive system with the N14 turbocharged engine from that of a Mini Cooper S. 
Yes, it's not the most powerful, 188 brake horsepower, but with a hybrid turbo and some tuning, I'm sure you can get about 350 brake horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque on the stock internals. The Mini Countryman Cooper S, as I said, is a bit of a wild card, but I really think these cars are quite special. Firstly, the four wheel drive, so your Mini Cooper S ain't gonna be able to keep up with it. It is a bit heavier, but I mean, spend a bit of money on this, spend a bit more than a bit of money, and you are gonna have an absolute weapon. A wolf in sheep's clothing, not to everyone's taste, but I absolutely love them. Price range on these are gonna be about four and a half to five and a half grand for a decent one. There are common issues with the PCV valve kind of intake getting coked up with carbon. Um, but I mean, preventative maintenance is making sure that the intake and the inlet valves are clean and making sure the turbocharger has no leaks and general maintenance on uh, engine and servicing. Great mods to be had worldwide. There's so much stuff available for this. It's just no one's done it in a countryman before. So yeah, make sure you guys comment below as to which one of these wagons are your favorite. Now there's guys out there who have taken these cars further in the Mini Cooper S versions. I don't think anyone's doing it to a countryman and it is four wheel drive. So one of you guys out there must be able to buy one of these for about five grand. Give us a call and we'll send it to the moon. So that right there was our top five wagons that you can purchase for under 5,000 pound and tune with potential to beat a G81 M3. I hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to comment below, share this video if it's been useful to you and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Don't, don't matter if you cast for the road or tracks Mexico on the lanes Or Dunnington doing up laps Car man I got maps Doing up maps Maximum power Cars get gats They got tuners We got tuners But they're tuners But they're tuners A load of Map got the map What kind of map Best boat map That's this lap Zoom in pass Don't watch out Big man map Three maps Take a passenger seat Watch a man collapse Foot to the floor Rev to the max The team come through like that All you see is flames All you hear is Put some bags Subscribe and like The visual's nice With times in the cam the drive is right when programmed by the MV guy. He's doing it well, he's doing it right, and they can't do it like man. MV Motorsport is in the game. Gang.